This Tech Channel video is brought to you by our Tech Channel partner, JLC PCB. JLC PCB is a perfect solution to make your PCB board ideas a reality. Hey friends, welcome to Flight Test Tech. I'm Josh. Today we're going to be showing you how to build the FT Easy Stealth. Now, the FT Easy Stealth is part of our FT Easy 3 Jet series. This is going to be a fantastic three pack where you get to build an Easy Hornet, an Easy Stealth, and also an Easy ME262. The nice thing about the FT Easy Stealth, along with all of our Easy series, is it can either be a chuck lighter or you can have them radio controlled by simply applying our two channel Easy Power Pack. First thing we're going to do is put this together. We're going to go ahead and glide it, see how she flies, and then later in the video, I'll show you how to make it radio controlled. Let's first start by popping out all of our pieces. We'll identify those pieces and start putting it together. All right, so we have all of our pieces popped out. Let's go ahead and identify them. First, we have the left and right doublers for our main fuselage piece. Notice that our one doubler is a little bit different. It's gonna go right over top of our center piece that has the etched box. Along with that, we have our little dihedral gauge. This dihedral gauge is also gonna give us a proper angle for our V-tail on the back of the stealth. We have our two tail pieces, and then we have our main body. Before we peel any paper, we're gonna to wanna to put a bead of glue right down the center and then smear that with a scrap piece of foam to glue that back into one solid piece. And I'm just gonna break off a little piece of scrap foam here, hold it flat on the table, and we'll give this about 30 seconds to dry. Now that the seam is thoroughly glued, we can come over and we can start peeling our paper. It's gonna reveal a really nice clean edge. And we'll flip this over and do the same process on the other side. And now we're going to go ahead and do the same process on all the remaining pieces, but we don't need to worry about our little dihedral gauge. I'm going to take the tip of a barbecue skewer or a ballpoint pen if you don't have one at home. I'm just going to lightly drag this down through the foam a little bit, allowing this to bend very delicately, just like what you see here. I'm going to do this on both sides. If you go down too deep and this piece cracks off, don't worry. All you need to do is take a little piece of tape on the very bottom and tack it back on. Using our dihedral gauge, we're going to clip it onto the far point of the wing tip, just like you see here. This is going to give us the proper amount of dihedral for this whole wing. What you want to make sure that you do is that you don't have this fighting against you. So if you need to open this section up anymore at all, that's totally fine. You want to make sure that it all bends up equally. Once you're happy with that, put a very thin piece of glue right down the seam, pop in your gauge, and I'm just gonna use a scrap piece of foam to wipe off any excess. I like to keep my fingers right around where the dihedral is just to make sure that stays nice and flat against the table. Let's give this 30 or 40 seconds to fully dry. Same process on the other side now, we're just gonna make sure that it has no problem lifting up. And we'll move our dihedral gauge from one side to the other. Once we're happy with that, we'll open that up. Kind of thin little piece of glue. You're always welcome to tape this down with a piece of tape if you wish, if you don't want to use the hot glue. It does the same job on both sides. And I'm just gonna smooth that out. If you have an adjustable temp glue gun like what we have with our FT300, you can dial that glue temperature all the way back. Specifically on the FT300, we have it down to the line between the low and the medium. All right, if you fully let the glue dry when you pull these wing tips out, what you should notice is it doesn't fall down at all. At this point, we're ready to move on to our next step and that's gluing the doubles on the fuselage. Let's go ahead and put our wing to the side for the moment. With our main wing complete, we're gonna put our attention now towards the center fuselage. Notice that the piece with the cutout is gonna be on the side that's gonna mount to where you see the etch marks. Let's go ahead and do that piece first. First, we're gonna do is a test fit. When we do our test fit, we wanna make sure that we line up the battery slot holes, the very top ridge around the etch mark and the top surface on the top and the bottom of the wing. Once we're happy with that, we can flip this over. We're gonna take our glue. I like to go around the perimeter. Don't have to put a lot of glue on it. And I'm gonna lay it right back where it was before, going to all those key areas. The motor mount spot, top and top, bottom of the fuselage, right along the top of the nose and the battery slot. Don't worry about the tab right here. That's gonna be the part that goes into your wing. Once we're happy with that, we can flip it over. We'll do another test fit. This time we don't have a slot for our control board. So it's much easier, just the battery slot, the bottom surface of the fuselage, top of the nose, and the top back of the fuselage. Here we 
still. Those rectangles, battery slot, tab, and those. And we're gonna put nice even pressure on this for about 30 seconds. Now that we have our fuselage done, let's do a quick test fit right on the top of our wing. The two tabs are gonna pop right down in there. And because of the doublers, it should sit nice and perpendicular. You're gonna notice here that there's a gap. And that's gonna be where our elevator is gonna be able to come up and meet the back of the fuselage. This is gonna give us the proper amount of reflex on our flying body stealth that will make it able to fly through the air nice and even. Before we tape this down, let's go ahead and just drag our tip of a ballpoint pen or barbecue skewer right through the back like you see here. This is gonna make it easier for this to lift up. And at this point, let's go ahead and glue down our piece. I'm gonna go right down the center piece here and also bead right along the nose where the tab is on both sides. You can also paste a bead of glue right on the back where the tail is gonna be. Place this right down in the, and we'll put it right down in the fuselage, a little wiggle back and forth. And I'm also gonna hold this up, going right down the center seam like you see here. Let's give this about 30 seconds to dry. Make sure the hot glue is fully cooled before moving on to your next step. Now if you'd like, you can take a razor blade and you can trim this nose nice and even. You're even welcome to take a piece of sandpaper and sand this area nice and round. It'll make the plane look really good they can even shave a little bit more weight off of it. Our next step here is to take our two tail pieces to make our V-tail, and we're also gonna bring back our little angle gauge here. What this angle gauge is gonna do is it's gonna give us a proper angle that we're gonna need to fit our tail down in and also establish it just like you see here. Before you do that, you can take either a razor blade, pen, marker, just crush down very carefully the inside edges just like you see what I'm doing now. This is gonna give it the ability when we test fit it to hold that angle even easier. To establish our angle, we're simply gonna hold our angle gauge right up against the bottom of the elevator and then push our tailpiece down to it. Once we practice that, we can come back with a little bit of glue. And then repeat the same process. I'll stick it down in. And we're just gonna press this nice and flat right up against it. Give this a good 45 seconds to a minute to dry before moving on to your next step. You wanna make sure that this piece is fully dried so the angle doesn't change. If you wait long enough, when you release tension, you'll notice that the tail doesn't move at all. Let's do the exact same process now on the other side. Just crush down very carefully the inside edges, just like you see what I'm doing now. Right to the corner and bend it over. So we come back with a little bit of glue. I'm just gonna press this nice and flat right up against it. Give this a good 45 seconds to a minute to dry before moving on to your next step. The airframe is now done for this, but if we just tried to fly it just as it sits right here, it would not fly well, and that's because the center of gravity hasn't been established. Center of gravity is really important because it puts the balance point in the proper area of the airplane to make it fly properly. If it's too far forward or too far backwards, the plane's simply not gonna fly. What we wanna do now is we wanna use the included nuts that we've been given in our kit, and we're gonna push that into the battery slot, and we're gonna position our fingers right over these two points that you see here. You see, without any kind of weight, it's too tail heavy. I'm just gonna simply take a nut, I'm gonna press it right into my battery slot, and I can move this back and forth until we get it just right. Every model is gonna be a little different, so just because where mine lands does not mean that your balance is gonna be in the exact same spot. A little bit more, and that looks pretty darn good there. All right, our next step now, we're gonna take this out and throw it, see how she flies. So like we said before, every plane's gonna be a little bit different, so you may have to adjust your center of gravity more forward or back, or even deflect the elevons a little bit just to make it glide better. Let's give it a toss and see how she flies. Here you go, Blake. That's pretty good. This is probably one of the hardest airplanes ever to launch, but if you just kind of grab it as wide as your fingers and then throw it like a dart, you don't throw it like a football, it should go really good. Perfect. Excellent. All right, friends, we are all done here. Let's go back in the shop and I'm gonna show you how to take this from a free flight to radio control. 
All right, we are back. The plane flew fantastic. Again, every model is going to be just a little bit different. So make sure you adjust your center of gravity and also adjust your elevons here and here to get that perfect glide. Now, when we put our electronics in, we're going to have to go through that same process again to get the type of flight characteristics we want, uh, both in glide and also under power. So you may have a little bit of adjustment in going from one transition to the other, but this looked really good. Let's go ahead and show you the components now, what's included in our two channel easy pack, and then we'll go ahead and show you how to put it onto the FT easy stuff. So this is our FT Easy Power Pack. Inside here, you're gonna have everything you need to take our Easy Series and make them go from a chuck lighter to an RC airplane. Let's show you what's inside. So what you see here is everything that you have inside of our FT Easy Two Channel Power Pack. You have your main transmitter, the control board that goes in the airplane. This is gonna give us our stabilization and also control the motors. We have our battery, our battery charger, our left and right motor, and we also include an extra set of props and a prop removal tool. This tool is really important if you wanna remove your props and not damage your motor. First thing we wanna do is we wanna put the battery on charge because this goes together so quickly that we don't wanna to have to wait on the battery charge. We want you to be able to go out and fly. To properly charge our batteries, the first thing we wanna do is we wanna plug our USB charger into the port. Once our charger is plugged in, we're then gonna connect our battery. Once we connect our battery, you'll notice that the red LED light on the charger goes on. When that charger finally goes off, that means that the battery is fully charged and you're ready to fly. Make sure you always unplug and replug in your charger between every charge to make sure that the little charge board has been reset. And the first thing I wanna do is I wanna pop out our little control board that you see here. I'm simply gonna take my thumbnail and I'm gonna just kinda of pull on this little tab that you see. And we're gonna rock that right out. You can choose to save this if you want. I'll just put this to the side. We're not gonna need it. We're now gonna bring our airframe back in and how we mount this is incredibly important. We wanna make sure that the battery lead is pointing towards the nose of the airplane and that we're also gonna mount this just like you see here. You can choose to use a little piece of sticky tape. I like to just take a couple little drops of hot glue. One here and one here. And I'll set this down into place and then press it in. Make sure you line your control board up with the pass-through hole that's on your fuselage. This is gonna be really important as we push our motor leads through to make connections. Next, we're gonna take our included wooden motor mount and we're gonna place this right over the center of the wing that you see here. We're gonna take careful note which side is the left and which side is the right. Anytime we decide what is the left and right on an airplane, it's always as if you're flying inside of the cockpit. So when you're looking out the nose, the left side is your left, the right is your right. So we'll turn the airplane just as it's pointing away from us. This is our left side. We're gonna take the motor with a little L on it for left. And I'm gonna place two drops of glue one drop on each wing. Next, I'm gonna press it into place, just like that. Give us about 20 seconds to 30 seconds until the glue is fully hardened. Same process on the next side. Quick test fit. One drop of glue, two drops of glue. You can easily break this glue free anytime you want to swap it from one plane to the next. You'll notice that there's a little recess on the very top of our fuselage. This is going to be where our motor mount goes. I'm just going to do a quick test fit, make sure it's nice and even, and once we're happy, I'm going to put a bead of glue right down the center, and I'm going to press it into place. Make sure that your piece is fully flat and also perpendicular both vertically and horizontally. Once the glue is dried, I'm gonna carefully just remove my little tab here, and I'm gonna wiggle this right on through the hole to the other side. You may have to twist this until it finally lines up. You'll notice that there's a white and red connector, and that connector is gonna match up with our white and our red motor lead. All we simply need to do is just line up the pins, make sure that we're not pushing in backwards, and press it on through. Same process on the red one, it's a lot easier. Again, we're gonna line up our pins, the pins are gonna be closer on the one side than the other. Just make sure that you line up with the same orientation on the socket. Now both of our connections are made. That'd be a really good time to dress up all your extra wire length that you have simply by just taping it down against your fuselage or your wing. We're just about ready to fly. So let's go ahead and put some batteries in our transmitter. We're just gonna need to th have three AA batteries. Make sure your batteries are always fully charged. If you don't have fully charged batteries, then you may not get the range of the performance that you need. There we go. And then by this time, our battery should be fully charged. Let's go ahead and get it. We're gonna use our battery the same way that we use the weight that we had in the nose when we were making the chuck lighter. We're gonna put it in the nose and then we're gonna slide it back and forth 
to get the proper center of gravity. Again, every plane's gonna fly a little different. You may need a little bit more nose heavy or a little tail heavy to get the right flight characteristics. But this should be, in general, about the perfect spot of where you want it to be. Now that we have our battery in, we're gonna go ahead and test the control signal. For this specific model, you're gonna go ahead and turn on your transmitter first. You're gonna notice a flash, flashing red light. We're now gonna go make our connection on the fuselage. And it's already turned on. You'll see a slow flashing red light. Once you have that, you're gonna go throttle all the way up, throttle all the way down, and you're gonna notice that both the transmitter and the receiver are gonna go solid. At this point, we have control. You're gonna notice that if we give it a little bit of throttle and we move it to the right, the right motor is gonna speed up. If we move it to the left, the left motor is gonna speed up. That's because the gyros are gonna always try to keep you flying level and straightforward. Let's go ahead and test and make sure that right works. Let's go ahead and test our throws. All right, when I push it to the left, the right motor speeds up. When I push it to the right, the left motor speeds up to give us our proper turn. At this point, we're ready to take it out and fly it. All right, friends, we're ready to go ahead and take our FT Easy 3 Stealth out for a flight here. Uh, one thing that we always want to mention again here, center of gravity when you have it based off electronics may shift forward or aft. And also, you may find yourself having to do a little adjustments. And I like to go ahead and adjust the elevons right here on the wings if need be here. Every plane's going to fly a little bit different. You may have to move your center of gravity and you may have to do elevons. But let's go ahead and put her in the air and see how she flies. Also, make sure that you're flying in high rates. To go into high rates, Simply press the button one time after you've been bound, you'll see a flashing slow red light that's gonna give you higher rates and help you to turn sharper. All right, let's go ahead and put it in the air and see how she flies. <laughs> Fantastic. So just like the other ones here, you give throttle, you go up, you reduce throttle, you go down. Strongly recommend not uh, depleting too much throttle and going completely closed on it, or else it'll go into what we call anti-spin mode, and that's gonna make your turns a lot more exaggerated and also give you power on both motors. Anytime you want to descend, just go down to about 10% throttle, and then right before you land, go back all the way. Now this stealth flies fantastic. <laughs> Let's carve up the sky a little bit. I think the stealth is honestly one of my favorites of this three pack. All right, let's go ahead and bring her in for a landing. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> she flies like a dream. This plane is an absolute blast to fly. Again, if you need to adjust anything, your elevons right here at the very back and moving your center of gravity will give you the characteristics that you desire. Thanks so much for being part of the Flight Test family. Thank you for taking time to build the FT-EZ3 jets with us. Can't wait to see what you create and build in the future. We'll see you next time.